Hi, this is Mike Elliott, and you're watching CEO Roadshow. Today, we're joined by Mr. Jorge Ramiro Monroy. He is the CEO of Arena Silver, a silver exploration company with a robust portfolio of Mexican silver assets. They trade in Canada on the TSXV under RSLV and in the U.S. as a fully reporting pink sheet under RSNVF. Good morning, Jorge, and welcome to the show. Good morning. It's great to, to see you, and thank you for making the time uh, for us to, to present our company. Very, it's our pleasure. Um, well, so let's just start off by having you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you got started with Rain of Silver. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm originally from, from Mexico. I've uh, been in the mining industry for about 10 years. I got started actually in Mongolia, of all places. And it was a time in just at the top of the last cycle for, for commodities where there was just a tremendous interest in in commodities and in Mongolia in specific, you know there were a lot of uh, mining activities going there. Robert Friedland had made the discovery of Oyutolgoy, and Rio Tinto was uh, in the process of, of of buying that asset for for a very large sum of money. So I, I started in the, in the business there uh, at that time, <clears throat> and then a, a few years after that, I started investing in the space myself and I would say about four years ago we started looking at silver specifically and silver I thought was very attractive for a number of reasons of course uh, a lot of macro reasons that I think a lot of your listeners would already be aware of but I also realized from um, you know from, from the condition in which the primary silver producers were at the time was such that you know, for, for, for now a number of years, silver had been very uh, at very low prices. And as a result of that, very few companies had the opportunity to do exploration. And they've been producing at very low, low, low prices with very low margins. A lot of them barely doing break even some years, maybe even at a loss. And the fact that that had, has had in exploration has been actually quite drastic because if you think about gold, you know, gold has always maintained a certain level. Well, it has gone up and down. By and large, companies have been able to make money. And in silver, it has been quite difficult. So what, we, what, the, what I realized was that there was a great need for exploration projects that could be taken forward. And, and as a result of that, I spoke to a number of Canadian exploration companies. And one company that we spoke with was uh, Mag Silver, and Mag Silver is a company that many of you may be familiar with. It's one of the most successful silver exploration companies in the last 20 years. They are about to put into production what's going to be the world's largest uh, and highest grade silver mine. Actually, I don't know if it's the largest, but certainly the the highest grade, and, and certainly certainly be one of the largest and it, it's an asset that has an incredible story it's a Juanicipio uh, mine and the founder of Max Silver, uh, Dr. Peter McGaugh was the one who did this discovery in the in the early 2000s and you know the the company absolutely took off and we were in an interesting situation where about three years ago we were able to do a deal with Max Silver for two assets that were in their in their company. However, Max Silver just didn't have the capacity, the human resources or the capital because you know they were really saving their money for a scenario where, you know where they were going to production. So, I suggested to them, you know, would you consider giving these assets to us? And then, you know, we will take care of funding the the company, taking the company public. And you know, advancing advancing the assets uh, and the exploration. So you know, we were lucky to be able to to do that. So did, we were a private company for two years, and then we went public in July of 2020, just a few months ago. We now have uh, 12 million dollars in cash, and we have the two projects that Max Silver gave to us: uh, Gigi, which is our flagship, and Batapilas, which is a historic former producing mine. And then we have added two more projects uh, on top of that. So now we have four 
grade projects, all of them high grade silver. Great. Yeah. And that was my next question. I guess you kind of gave us a, a snapshot, which, which my next question was, could you give us an overview of really your, your, your extensive projects across North America, starting with uh, Mexico? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as I was saying, we, we have four projects. Our flagship is an asset called Gigi, which is in, in Mexico in the state of Chihuahua. We have uh, Batopila, San La Reina, also in Chihuahua. And then we have a fourth asset in Nevada called uh, Medicine Springs. So the philosophy of the company and you know all our assets share this characteristic is you know we focus on on assets that have some exploration that you know we're former producers that have some drilling and that have the potential for becoming a district scale with high grade silver and Gigi is just such a project it's in a district that has produced uh, a staggering half a billion ounces of silver uh, continuously since the 1700s until today. And what's uh, really interesting about this project is that that half a billion ounces of silver that I was describing to you has come from, from an area that's right adjacent to, to our land package. We have around uh, close to, close to 5,000 hectares and we surround the two mines from which this half a billion ounces of silver of historic production has come. However, the source of the system for the whole district has never been found. And, you know, we do find through the drilling that Max Silver has done over the years before we took over the company, we do find very strong indications validated through that drilling geophysics and other, and other uh, characteristics that are at surface and at depth. We, we can see that the, those veins continue into our property. And what we're looking now is for the source of the system, which, you know, in, generally in this, in this CRD type of systems in North America can get quite large. So this is our flagship project. We're just in the process of permitting for 10,000 meters. We are in the final, in the final stages, we are expecting our permits imminently. And as soon as we get them, we'll be drilling throughout the rest of the year and into uh, into next year. Well, um, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. Well, I also, after that, I guess I, I didn't want to cut you off, but um, next, could you tell us what you believe will be some of the, uh, the primary catalysts uh, for the company over the next six months uh, that investors should watch for? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, you know, the, the main catalyst, of course, is going to come through this drilling at Gigi. The exploration, as I mentioned, you know, we, we should start our drilling shortly and that will continue for, for the rest of the year. And then we have three other projects that are also excellent projects. We have Batopilas, which is a historic mine. It produced 350 million ounces of silver at a 1.5 kilos per ton silver. It's the highest grade silver, to my knowledge, that's uh, been in production in Mexico. And it was a listed company in the New York Stock Exchange. Um, it didn't shut down because it was depleted. It shut because of the Mexican Revolution in, in 1913. And uh, Max Siller staked the property in the mid 90s. It was part of Max Siller's original IPO. And what Peter McGaugh and Max Siller did is they staked the entire district, which is the old mine where those 350 million ounces of silver came from, as well as the the whole district, which contains about 30 uh, known veins, which have mineralization and which basically have never been drilled. So it's an exciting project. We're in the process of uh, defining our drill targets there. That's going to take us uh, a couple more months. We have a team of four geologists. And then the plan is to start drilling that project in Q1 2021. That, uh, by the way, if, um, regarding that project, you know, there is a great book that's written about it uh, called The Silver Magnet. It's a you know, fantastic story uh, written in the 1930s, just describing how this mining district got set up by a U.S. entrepreneur in the, uh, in the, in the late 1800s, how, you know, and how we became Mexico's highest grade silver and most important uh, silver mine in the early 1900s. 
And uh, you know, it's a wonderful book. Gives you a very good sense of you know what we have in, in our project. We, we own the, the the historic mine, which is a topic of this book. And what I was going to say is, if any of your listeners is interested in having a copy, you unfortunately cannot buy it uh, in Amazon. But we found a, a bookshop close to where our mine is that had a few copies. So if any of your listeners wanted to have a copy, you know, feel free to write to me. My, you can write to me at uh, J O R G E, which is my name, Jorge, at uh, reynasilver.com. And I, if you send me your name and your address, I'll be happy to send you a copy. Um, but you know, it's a it, it is a really well written book and gives you a very good sense of of uh, what exploration was at that time. And you know, really, the sense that you get from from reading the book, and you know, obviously, in my case, from having been in the site, is that, you know, you have this you have this mine that produced 350 million ounces of silver, where the average grade was 1.5 kilos. And you know, in those days, they didn't really have the modern methods of exploration and mining that we have now. And so, you know, this is really one of the first times that this asset has the kind of budget that we bring to the table and the kind of uh, technology that we bring to the table to, you know, to, to look for, for um, the potential for the whole district. So sorry, I, I went into a very long... No, that is very interesting. I'm a bit like, of a like myself, asset so. about the catalysts. Um, and then, you know, we, we do have two more assets, uh, La Reina and Medicine Springs, which we acquired this month. And, and it's the same thing. We are in the process of, of defining our drill targets. Uh, the, the Medicine Springs project is in Nevada, and that one does have drill permits that are uh, valid. So our technical team is in the process of assessing the, you know, the correct way to go about drilling these targets. And then in, in La Reina, we're also uh, doing drill target definition. And what, what I would like to see is that, that we do at least a thousand to 2000 meters of drilling in these two pro other projects as well, you know, in Q1 of 2021. So, you know, four projects, uh, Gigi being our flagship uh, and a lot of exploration between in, in basically, basically uh, the end of this year and the beginning of, of next year. Great. It sounds like you guys are, are busy and have and have a lot going on. And there's really a lot here in this story for investors to sink their teeth into. And uh, yeah. and, and I love that you get into the history of that of that region because it's certainly important. I mean, people don't realize that there's been you know mining going on there for hundreds, probably thousands of years in, in, yeah. in that area. I gotta tell you, it's a, that's something that, that I mean, you hear about it, but you know, having seen it in person is quite it's quite it's quite incredible. Mexico, the, the Spanish came in, in 1500, uh, 1521. And they immediately got busy extracting silver. The the Aztecs, of course, had of course had had mining as well, but the, you know the Spanish really did it quite aggressively for basically for uh, for 400 years until the early 1900s, and um, sorry, early 1800s, and then the Mexican descendants of the, the, the Spaniards who who, who stayed uh, kept kept it up. And you know everywhere you go in the country, you find historic mines. And it really has served as a, as a footprint for Canadian exploration companies to go and, and, and expand that exploration. So it's, it, is, it is actually pretty amazing. And you don't really have that so much in Canada and the US, which you know, geologically are also very well endowed, but you know, you, the fact that you had people doing uh, mining for 400 years, it gives you a, a big advantage when you're doing your exploration. Yeah. Well, and I don't want to digress, but some of those veins, I mean, some of that, the mineralization is probably runs through like the from the Rockies through you know through the you know western and southwestern United States right down into Mexico. So it's all part of that same system because here in the U.S. that's primarily where you find those types of of, of uh, mineral assets as well. But before I get to so yeah, very very interesting story. Uh, I, I no interview will be complete though uh, without having you tell us about your uh, world class technical team. So so let's do that next. Absolutely. So the you know the the main person on the technical team is Peter Magal. So Peter Magal is one of the founders of Max Silver. As part of the deal that, that we did with uh, with Max Silver, Max Silver was kind enough to let Peter sit on our advisory board. And we are also employing a full time team of geologists in Mexico. Uh, the the majority of whom have working experience with Max Silver and other um, 
major silver companies like Pan American Silver, Exelon. So we have a very strong team. The, the only thing that I like a lot about the team is that they've actually been working as a team for you know, the better part of uh, 25 uh, years. So they, they, uh, they really work uh, very well. And, and you know, it's one of the most successful exploration teams in, in, you know, in Mexico. They, they have, the, for Max Silver, Peter Mugal has led the discovery of the Juanicipio mine, which I was describing to you at the beginning of the interview. The Valdecanos vein, uh, Cinco de Mayo, which is a CRD very similar to our flagship asset, Gigi, uh, participated in, in part of the discovery of the Platosis mine, which is Exelon's high grade CRD, again, very similar to the project we have. And then we have another gentleman in our advisory board whose name is Doug Kerwin. And Doug was the VP of exploration of Ivanhoe, uh, Robert Friedland's company. And he was part of the team that did the discovery of Oyu Tolgoy, one of the largest copper and gold mines in the world. So really have a, an excellent, excellent team. And the other thing, uh, Mike, that, that we have that, that you know, we're very pleased with is the company is very well funded. We have $12 million in cash. So we really are in a position to, to allow our, our geologists to to, to go about this exploration you know, in a way that we can produce meaningful resor- results. Because you have to remember in, in the peer of equities that we're part of with silver exploration, really what the, the trigger for, for market cap appreciation is when you're able to produce high grade silver results and validate the concept that, that you have the potential for a high grade silver deposit. And then finally, we have a great chairman. Uh, his name is Peter Jones. He is the former CEO of Hot Bay Minerals, which is a large copper producer in Canada. And he is a mining engineer, so really a great person to have to bring, uh, you know, corporate governance and also to, you know, to his vast experience uh, running a multi-billion um, Canadian company. So we're very pleased with, with the team and uh, very pleased with with our cash position very pleased with, with our projects great well jorge that is all the questions we had for this interview but um any other parting comments you'd like to make before we wrap up you know you know i think i think i, I would just say you know it, it, our company is relatively relative young not too many people know it as a result of that if you compare it to our peers our share price is still quite a bit uh, undervalued in, in relationship to, to what I would consider our peers. If you go to our website in our corporate presentation, we do have um, a chart with uh, with our peer group. We select the companies where we thought we would genuinely and as close as possible to, to the asset base that we have. So, you know, it's an excellent time to look at look at our company. And, and if you're interested in know, knowing more about it, there's some great videos explaining each of our assets in our website. And of course, anybody who, who wants to reach out to me directly, please do so as well. Great. Jorge, on a very, uh, very good talking to you and thank you for the time and, and joining us on the show. And uh, we're going to start following this story very closely here with our audience on CEO Roadshow. So uh, we'd love to catch up with you again in the near future for another update. No, hey, listen, and I appreciate you giving us the, the chance to, to reach to your audience especially at a time where it's not so easy to travel. And, you know, there, as I said to you before, it's, it's, we're, we're happy to be able to, to get the story out and, and getting people, especially in the U.S., to, to get uh, familiar with the story. Great. Well, Jorge, uh, until next time, uh, take care, and we look forward to uh, news and, and the upcoming updates uh, from Raina Silver. Fantastic. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Everybody, again, we were talking to Mr. Jorge Ramiro Monroy. He is CEO of Reina Silver, a silver exploration company with a robust portfolio of Mexican silver assets. They trade in the TSXV under RSLV and are a fully reporting pink sheet company here in the U.S. under RSNVF. So check them out. You can learn more about them also from their website at www.reinasilver.com. Thank you for watching CEO Roadshow.